Hello, Varun. How are you? Varun, are you there? Streaming one is far. Okay, part body is in the other end. Hello? Ah, Varun, how are you? Yes, Varun. We heard you singing song very nicely. Okay, okay. Doesn't matter, but try to improve your uh, singing skill. That was not that much fair. <laughs> Still, you can improve. Yeah. Right. Is it so? You know Karnataka? It's great here. Are you learning are you learning Carnatic music? Oh, till ninth standard you were learning Carnatic music. Then uh, uh, one day I should uh, hear, uh, hear you singing some uh, Carnatic basic songs, okay? Uh, because I love to hear Carnatic songs. I am a big fan of uh, uh, the singer, playback singer, Unni Krishnan, okay? I love to hear Carnatic songs. Let's see. One day I will ask you to sing uh, so that I can uh, enjoy a bit listening to that, okay? Right. <coughs> uh, I think uh, in the last class we have uh, stopped up to this uh, rainbow, isn't it? Yeah? We will uh, continue with that, okay? <coughs> I remember that up to that we have stopped, isn't it? Okay. So, this uh, rainbow is nothing but a natural spectrum. Why do we say it is a natural spectrum? Can you tell me? No, no, yeah, that's called the spectrum. Band of seven color is called spectrum. Since uh, nothing artificially involved, everything is, uh, da, I mean, caused by nature. So uh, be, that is why we call it as natural spectrum, isn't it? And that too, we know that it is appearing only after the uh, little bit range, or at least if a drizzling should be there. Because in the artificial spectrum, we require uh, two things. One is uh, a composite light, a white light, and a prism. So, prism only can uh, deviate the uh, different colors. They, they can uh, uh, split the colors, seven colors into a spectrum, isn't it? And uh, I hope you remember which color is deviated most and which color is deviated less. Yeah, tell me. 
violet is deviated more and red is deviated less isn't it and here uh, when this comes uh, when, when you are talking about natural spectrum this uh, tiny water droplets are uh, playing a major role because they are only acting as a, a prism isn't it so you know that the shape of the uh, water drop when it is falling from the height okay though uh, water drops uh, assumes a spherical in shape when it is a water drop actually it is spherical in shape but when it is coming down due to the uh, force of gravity only it is little bit stretched so that is why the shape spherical shape little bit it is elongated and becomes a uh, little bit like a water drop what we call it as water drop shape right so that it is looking like a prism so the uh, sunlight when it is entering it is uh, reflected internally due to multiple reflection and then refracted and then it is dispersing the sunlight all these three phenomena are taking place inside but my question here it is uh, one of the uh, well known fact that you have to uh, learn can you tell me why is that uh, water drop is spherical in shape not only the water drops if we take uh, a pebble in a river running river or most of the fruits or vegetables most of the natural creature everything is seems to be somewhat spherical in shape even take you take the shape of the planet the planets are also uh, spherical in shape is there anything uh, uh, big reason behind that uh, shape which is spherical in shape can you guess it why is it so you can even ask your friends also probably the, uh, most of the students may not know Yeah, take take time, no problem. But it's such a important uh, fact you have to know. So when uh, you know that how pebbles are uh, formed, when the rocks, bit of rocks, when it is broken from the big rocks, when they are washed away with the water, they run for a long distance along with the water, and they dash, dash with the other rocks and uh, small rocks, big rocks, so that uh, the size they lose mass. When they are losing mass, why do they assume? assume a shape of almost a shape of a spherical uh, shape isn't it not uh, in a form of a triangle or rectangle or cuboid some other shape like cylinder or something why is it assuming the shape of the sphere even the planet you know that how the planets are created uh, long, very uh, millions of years ago they were only the part of the uh, sun actually due to the you know explosion which is uh, uh, created in the sun they have come out of that because of evolution they were thrown out De depending upon the size of the uh, broken piece they have reached a different uh, places thereby they keep on rotating and there is no external force to stop that so they keep on rotating so over a period of time they cool down and they become a uh, plant what we say now and uh, why do they assume this kind of uh, spherical in shape whether the water drop whether the fruits most of the fruits and vegetables or the pebbles why do they assume this kind of uh, shape even our head also probably why is it not a perfect uh, cube or cuboid it is also something like sphere isn't it round shape <coughs> yeah No idea. <coughs> no idea. Okay, uh, let me tell you. Uh, basically, there are two reasons. In the gas creation in the nature, every object wants to possess minimum potential energy wants to possess minimum potential energy so to have minimum potential energy they should have minimum mass 
if you take any shape, three dimensional shape, right, if you take only the sphere, the sphere only has got the minimum mass, right. If you take a square, you can find a sphere inside. If you take a cuboid, you can find a sphere inside. So by shaping it, the final shape which you can get is nothing but a sphere. Even the smallest point if you take an atom, that is also the minimum shape which you can say, that will also be a spherical in shape. So in God's creation, he has decided that only those objects which has got the minimum mass will have minimum potential energy that way they can have the stability right so that that is why uh, the, when the rocks are rolling down along the, with the water they, when they dash against with that every corner chip everything is chipped out and they, they become a spherical in shape right so in the same way this uh, water drops when it is falling down from the uh, sky in the beginning it may be spherical in shape but due to the gravitational pull of the earth they assume this uh, what you call it as drop of water right so that is only acting as a, a prism here and thereby we get uh, uh, this light weight light uh, uh, reflected internally and refracted and uh, they are dispersed into seven colors what we call it as natural spectrum okay right <clears throat> the next one is Here, uh, we have already learnt about uh, the rainbow, hope so. So, we always know that, uh, have you ever seen a rainbow in our day-to-day uh, -day life? Have you ever seen this in a natural surrounding, in a natural setting, not in the textbook? Yes or no? Varun? Tell me Varun. Are you able to hear? Hello. Varun? What happened? You are not responding to my question. Find out, man. Oh, my God. Varun, are you doing some other work? Hello. Varun? Look at the screen, man. What happened? What are you doing? You are doing some other work? Hello? You no, know, I can see you. You can straight away, no, you can straight away look at me. No, you should say that, no, if you are not able to hear, you just have to say, I am not able to hear. Simply you can shake your hand and say, I can watch you straight away. Okay? So, if you can just look at me and say I am not able to hear, we can check it out. Yeah, shall we continue?
Yes? And then, <laughs> okay. At, at, at what point uh, did you stop that? Tell me so that we can continue with that. From which point did you stop? The, no, no. From which point did you stop? That tell me. No, no. I want the specific point. Okay, but better uh, keep. Uh, you know, uh, don't come very closer. Okay, I am able to see only your face, little bit move backward and then sit comfortably and watch. Okay? Yeah, that's correct. That is okay now. <laughs> you are scaring me by looking, come, coming forward. Okay? I just, uh, I already told you that you have to keep the little, uh, that is least distance, no? Least distance of distinct vision. We have learnt about that in physics. You have to maintain that. If you are coming closer, your uh, glass width will be increasing. Be careful. Right? Okay, have you ever seen a, a rainbow in your day-to-day uh, -day life? Natural rainbow, have you ever seen? And where did you see? Tell me. Okay. Uh, probably, uh, if 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 you got any any other chance, don't miss it because it can be seen as you as you have already known about that. It can be seen only after a little bit uh, shower, rain shower, or even after drizzling, little bit drizzling, so that the atmosphere should retain that uh, uh, moisture, water drops. So then only it can be refracted, okay. And uh, the interesting thing is that it can be seen only in the direction opposite to the sunlight because the sunlight has to enter that and then refract. So the direction is also very very important that you should remember, okay. Right. <coughs> and similarly, if you have a chance to visit any waterfalls, right, and that can also be uh, possible because in that water shower, where, where you can see in the waterfalls, uh, throughout the time, because of the speed of the falling water, the water may be scattering everywhere. So, it will be present all over the space, around this uh, hill or mountain. So, at the time, when uh, during the sunny day, when the sunlight is there, so the sunlight will be uh, uh, dispersed, uh, refracted and dispersed through that, so that you can see the uh, rainbow like this. Even in, even without any rain also, because uh, that rain's uh, role is played by this water drops from the waterfalls. And my next question to you is: uh, When you are looking at the rainbow, you are able to see just like an arc, right? But actually, is that the actual uh, shape of the uh, rainbow? Do you think so? Then, what could be the, what could, definitely you can see. Then, what is the shape then? Then, what is the shape then? It is also one of the interesting fact that you should know. No, I will tell you that it is like a circle, complete circle, which can be seen when you are flying in an aeroplane. Really, I tell you, it is arc only. Because, when you are flying from an aeroplane, at a distance, you can see a complete circle of uh, this uh, rainbow. It is because you are able to see, it is a complete circle actually, okay. So, since uh, we are, uh, when you are flying in the aeroplane, only you can see that. Since we are on this uh, ground, we are able to see only the part of that, which may be looking like a uh, part of the circle, which is nothing but arc. It is arc only, right. 
So only those who are flying the aeroplane during that rainy season or uh, after the rain they can see the complete circle of the uh, rainbow. That is another interesting fact you have to remember. Okay. Right. <coughs> the next one is uh, the atmospheric refraction. The next concept is atmospheric refraction. This is also a very interesting scientific concept that uh, what is this uh, refraction already we have studied when the light is entering from uh, two different media one a rarer medium or denser medium to a rarer medium or a rarer to denser medium with the two different density okay. So with the two different media when the light is entering it is getting refracted that is the path of the light is uh, changed deviated or bent towards the normal or away from the normal. So that is happening not only on the earth it is also in the sky also right that we will see in detail now. Have you ever seen when you are travelling on a highway during the summer season it may be looking like water on the uh, road even at the midday at the 12 noon when it is very hot you can see some watery substance on the uh, road. Do you know what is that? Do you know what is that? Here, here you can see something like water. It is not actually water. It may be looking like water. It is not water actually. It is only illusion, optical illusion. What is that called in science, in physics? Yeah. Usually, huh? Yeah. Mirage. Very good. Mirage. In Tamil, we say carnal near, isn't it? So it is not actually water. It may look as if water is present there, and that is because of the. Uh, variation in the uh, light and also variation in the density because of the temperature right that is actually random uh, wavering or flickering of object when it when you see through this uh, uh, very hot hair very hot air which is rising above the uh, road yeah optical density is varying right when it is raising when this hot air is raising you know that the water, the air around this is cool and above the surface it will be very hot. So there is two different or not only two we can say, there are many layers we can say. The atmosphere may, may be considered as a, a layers, different layers of air. So one layer may be very hot which is very closer to the road and above that will be let, less hot, less hot like that. So since the density is keep on varying, we can consider each and every uh, layer as a medium, one different medium. So uh, and this hot hot air which is lighter than the cool air above it, so the refractive index is slightly less than that of the cooler air. The hotter air has got lesser refractive index than the cooler air. So due to this difference in refractive index, what will happen? The light will be keep on refracted. That is why when you are able, when you are just viewing any object through that, it may be like wavering. It may be just the water like water it is uh, waving, like on the sea or on the uh, ocean how the tides are formed like this even on the road it may be wavering it is because of the difference in the density of air. As here the physical condition that is the refractive medium as we have already explained that different layers they may not be stationary at all the time the same air may not be there. So when the air is uh, heated up it, it will keep on moving towards upward so that the cool air will come down because the cool air has got more moisture and it has got more density more weight also will be there more mass will be there so it will move down. So like that the position is keep on uh, changing isn't it. So due to the change in the position and the light which is coming through that will also be changing isn't it the refractor light will also be keep on changing that is why we say we are not able to see the object very clearly so it is flickering we say. So this is nothing but what we say the refraction of light by the earth atmosphere on a small scale in the local environment on the 
uh, surface of the earth. And similarly, this can happen on a large scale in the sky. What do we call it as twinkling of stars. The twinkling of stars is similar phenomenon. What is that? Refraction of light by the earth atmosphere on a much larger scale. That is called a atmospheric refraction. Okay. Now let us see why the stars are twinkling. There is a big difference. We have uh, in the lower class we have studied that uh, the only uh, stars will be twinkling and the planet will not be twinkling because planets uh, stars have got the steady light. The planet will not be. They will be uh, ref actually reflecting the light from the other stars only. They don't have the light of their own, right? And let us see why is it because of. The basic fact is that it is because of atmospheric refraction of the light which is coming from the stars. That is the different layers of the atmosphere, they refract the light which is coming from the stars. Right. Now the starlight, the light from the star which is entering the earth's atmosphere is undergoing refraction continuously before it is reaching the earth. Why is it continuously uh, refracted? Because as we have already discussed, when the sunlight is entering, or during the daytime or night time throughout the time the air is heated at a different levels the outermost layer will be very much hot and so that when it is coming here so that and also the layer which is very closer to the uh, rough surface like a rocky surface or sandy surface they will be very hot so other parts will be of different temperature so due to this difference in temperature each layer will be refracting the uh, starlight in a different way. Okay. So that is why they will keep on changing the direction. Right. So denser to rarer, rarer to denser like this will be keep on changing the uh, direction. And here the atmospheric refraction is occurring in the medium. This medium. What is that medium here? The atmosphere of different layers. And this atmosphere can be considered as a medium of gradually changing refractive index. Medium of gradually changing refractive index. Hot air, hot layer of the atmosphere will have lesser refractive index. So cool layer of the atmosphere will have higher refractive index. Like this, because of many layers of gradually changing refractive index, so this atmospheric refraction is occurring. And uh, the fact is that the atmosphere will bend the starlight, light towards the normal. So what is the condition that the light will bend towards the normal? Do you know that? At what condition, under what condition the light which is entering the medium will bend towards the normal? Exactly, very good. From rarer medium to the denser medium, it is bending towards the normal. So, in the similar way, here the topmost, as I said, it will be always hot. So, from the hot to the denser medium. So, rarer to the denser, again rarer to denser. So, like this, when it is entering like this with a gradually changing, gradually increasing or changing, you can say, it is bending towards the normal. So, that the apparent position of the star is not actual position, it is slightly differing when it is viewed from near the horizon. You know horizon, it is what you call in Tamil and Surana, Adivanam Adin Sulvang, right? Horizon. So from the horizon, if you see, the, the actual position will not be uh, same as it is. It will be slightly changing, okay? It is because of the refraction. And also, this apparent position as we have already discussed because of the change in the refracting medium, it is not stationary because the air is continuously moving. It is keep on changing, isn't it? So, that is the physical condition of the earth atmosphere are not stationary because of different uh, regions will have different temperature. Say in, uh, for America it will be very chill, for India it will be very hot. So, due to that what will happen? The air will be keep on circulating throughout the earth. The atmospheric air will be keep on circulating. So, the physical condition will be keep on changing. So, due to that what happens? The position of the star is not seen actually as it is, but it is slightly different from its position. What we call it as apparent position. So, apparent is nothing but it is not actual. It seems to be at that point, but it is not so. That is the position, but that is not the position. It will be different. 
So that is what we call it as apparent position. Right. And now <coughs> the stars are very very far away. We know that from the earth. They are to be considered as a point source of light. Actually we know that there are two uh, different uh, sources of light. Can you tell me what are the two types of sources? One is as we have uh, told here a point sized or point source of light. What is the other one called? A That is uh, which has got the own light and uh, not their own light. That is called luminous and non-luminous. But here we say points, point source of light and another one. The light from the sun is not a point source of light. Yes or no? No. Okay, I will tell you. The other, other source is nothing but called the extended source of light. Point source is the one which is, which the light is coming out from a point. Okay. When you compare a torch light and a sunlight, sunlight is called an extended source of light. Torch light can be called as a point source of light. So from a point the light is coming out. Okay. So that, that way since the stars are very very far away, no, when you are comparing with the size, okay, the sun is a, such a big one which is giving light for the whole uh, solar system. But you cannot uh, shine the torch light to light that solar system, isn't it? So that is why we, when you are comparing that, actually it is point size like a point, from a point we are giving a light or you make a hole in a paper and keep it near a, a tube light or any light so that that source will become a point source of light, okay. Through a point you have to get the light, extended is the one which is uh, spreading all over in all directions. Now this starlight is, stars can be considered as a point source of light. Now, as the path of this rays which is coming out from the stars goes on varying because of the atmospheric refraction, the apparent position of this uh, star is also fluctuating. It is something like if somebody is shining a torch light towards when you are, uh, you would have seen in the uh, police patrol during night time, if they want to stop the thief, what will they do? They will shine the torch light and shake that like this. So, you will be struggled to drive and you will stop that. That is the way they stop. In the similar way, the stars because of this atmospheric refraction, they will show as if the position is at one time, the other time the position will be somewhere, so that the bending of light is in different direction, isn't it? So, since the light is coming out in different direction, we say that it is twinkling, it is producing a twinkling effect, okay? Sometimes the, the refraction may be uh, too much and they will be deviating and the light becomes little bit dim. And sometimes the deviation is uh, somewhat a little bit uh, lesser so that the bright light is coming out so that the star is appearing very bright. So that way sometimes it becomes fainter, sometimes it becomes brighter thereby it is giving a twinkling effect. It is because of the atmospheric refraction that is the point you have to remember. Okay, That is what it is uh, showing here. Okay, When it is coming here, this is the apparent position, this is the actual position. So when it is coming here, so it will be refracted like this in different directions and when it is reaching your eye, you may think that the star is somewhat here only, but it is not, not here. That is what we say it is apparent position and this is the actual position, okay. Next, <coughs> there may be a question, why these planets are not sprinkling? Planets are also somewhat uh, millions of kilometers away from us like the stars only, but why they are not uh, uh, twinkling? Though they are, uh, though they are not extended source, they are not the source of light at all. They don't have light at all because they are reflecting the light from the sun. But stars are having their own light. It is a, a burning ball, which uh, the fusion and uh, fission reaction is taking place, right? But here, though they are bright, you can see that the Venus or uh, the Jupiter or Mercury, they may be very bright because they are away from us and they are receiving the sunlight so that they are reflecting the sunlight. But that is that also becomes a, a reflecting surface. But why are they not twinkling? That question may be uh, in your mind, right? So uh, the, question, the answer is that when you are comparing the position or the distance of the stars with the distance of the planets, they are somewhat uh, much closer to our earth. So when they are much closer to our earth, they can be considered as extended sources 
of light. Actually, we should not use this word external sources because they are not the sources. They are only reflecting. But here for explanation purpose, we say that they can be considered as extended sources when compared to the starlight. Right. So, when, when it is extended source of light, it will give the light in different direction, all the direction, almost all the direction. Right. So, in each ray, we can say in each direction when the light is coming, we can consider this big uh, planet as a collection of large number of points of of light or we can say a planet can be considered as a large number of small stars. Like if one star is giving out light in one direction, the other star may be giving that uh, light in other direction. Thereby, if one is losing, the other will be compensated. So that thereby, when all the lights are coming out, the average, the average difference will be nullified. The average difference will be nullified so that we will be getting the steady light. There won't be any twinkling effect. Okay. So, uh, from the moon, we will be keep on getting the light constantly so that there cannot be any twinkling effect. Understand? It is because that it can be considered as a collection of large number of point source of light. So that we say that the total variation in the amount of light entering our eye is from all the individual points I source. So it will become average out to zero. So that the twinkling effect is nullified. Right? So what is nullified here? Right? Remember the variation. Yes, the variation is zero. What do you say? The variation is zero because it has got number of uh, point size sources. So if one point source is giving out light, the other point sources will not be giving out light. Thereby, at any point of time, we will be keep on getting the light from that. So there won't be any variation. So the variation is zero. So no tinkling, tinkling effect. That is why we say that stars are twinkling, but the planets are not twinkling. Okay. The next important uh, interesting concept is that the advanced sunrise and a delayed sunset. Advanced sunrise and a delayed sunset. That is the next concept. This is also uh, because of the uh, refraction only. And uh, it is a noted fact that the sun is visible to us about 2 minutes earlier. 2 minutes earlier and about 2 minutes later than the actual sunset. We mean that the horizon, when you are on the Adivan of the Pakunolia, the sunset. It is not actually the sunset. Actually, the sun has already set, but you are able, still you are able to see 2 minutes after the sunset. You are able to see the sun even after 2 minutes after the actual sunset. Similarly, you are able to see the sunrise in the morning before 2 minutes of the actual sunrise. You understand? That is what we say, the advance and the uh, sunset and the sunrise. So, how is it? Let us see. Let us see how. Suppose you consider this, a person is standing here. Okay? For him, this is the horizon. When you are looking at this, right, this is the horizon. Okay? But actually, the, the sun is actually here only. And when the sunlight is reaching, we know that it is because of the atmospheric refraction that the sunlight from this point, because of this is extended source of light, so it will be keep on giving out light and thereby bending that and we will be seeing the light as if the apparent position of the sunlight is here. Apparent position of the sun is here, but the actual position is here. It is similar to the stars as we have discussed already. The stars may be here actually because of the atmospheric refraction, you are able to see that the star is actually here, that is sun is actually here. So that this difference from here to here, it takes 2 minutes. So that is why we are able to see the the sunrise just 2 minutes before the sunrise. Do you get it? And similarly, in the sunset also, the time difference between the actual sunset and the apparent sunset is about 2 minutes. Right? And that apparent flattering of the sun disk when it is just uh, hiding in the horizon, okay, it is also due to the same phenomenon what you call it as atmospheric refraction. Because of this different layers of the atmosphere, when the light, when the light is entering here, so it will bend towards the normal, okay. It bend towards the normal again, towards the normal again, towards normal again. So when it is reaching here, when you extend this line, you may think that the sunset is actually 
the sun is here but actually it has got already set settled down but you will still see that the sun is here ok so thereby we say that we are able to see the uh, sunset even after 2 minutes after even after the actual sunset right so this is what the uh, about uh, advanced sunset and the sunrise the next uh, another interesting concept which we observe every day in our daily life it is called a yeah yeah before sunrise and uh, later after sunset the next one is the tyndall effect very interesting uh, concept tyndall effect it is nothing but <coughs> here uh, the earth atmosphere it is nothing but a heterogeneous mixture of minute particle you know what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous homogeneous will have the same uh, kind of particles hetero means mixture ok and this heterogeneous is uh, including uh, like uh, smoke uh, tiny water drops or even uh, suspended particles of dust even the molecules different molecules of air different gases what we say so that is why we say that uh, the atmosphere is a heterogeneous mixture of uh, gases or uh, particles anything we can say now you would have seen that in a dense forest right like this or you know even in your garden if you have got a very tall trees in the early morning if you see it will be very beautiful see that the sunlight will be entering like this and uh, the path of the light will be visible very nicely when you are seeing from the sideways suppose we are standing here and look at that the sunlight is entering the beam of light can be very nicely seen right and this light is reaching us when you are standing here it is being reflected diffusely by this particle what is this uh, diffusing we have already uh, discussed about that when you just uh, uh, light an uh, instant stick, stick you know the smoke will be just uh, mixing with the atmospheric air what you call it as diffusing or if you put potassium permanganate in water how it is mixing with the water that is called the diffusion ok so similar way the light is reaching after being reflected different in the different direction so that it get diffused by this uh, atmospheric particles suspended particles right so this phenomenon what we call as the scattering of light by the colloidal particles only give rise to Tyndall effect so the definition is like this one the scattering of light by the colloidal particles give rise to Tyndall effect so hope you remember what is colloidal particles in the chemistry you have studied isn't it? colloids about colloid solutions uh, do you remember that yeah forgot ok ok no problem uh, the size of the particle if it is from uh, 1 nanometer to 1 millimeter micrometer ok very minute 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer ok that much small it is so that range of particles are called a colloidal particles ok so these particles when the light is falling on them what will they they will be scattering scatter na chedradi kirun solvanga ok like uh, you will break the coconut in front of lord ganesha no that is what we say scattering so that way they will be scattering that uh, light in different direction so that is what we call as uh, Tyndall effect here also you can see in a dark room when light is entering through this window because of the colloidal particles present in that room the light will be falling on that and will be scattered in different directions so that we are able to see the path of light ok this is what we say uh, Tyndall effect ok and this can also be seen uh, if you have visited any, any of your uh, uh, poor friends say for example those who are staying in huts ok attached shed you know the wall of good sense will only on the marvit lamp at the line it can it can be noted very easily because those thatched shed will have small holes the palmyra uh, leaf really are not a whole circle how will I know on a day time Layla and my time la morning time la evening time la through the small holes the light will be entering so once you open the door of those houses you can see small like spotlights on the floor which will be very beautiful for us but it is uh, so sad that they are living in those places I have seen such friends that is why I, I could just uh, uh, realize that uh, real situation I could see that uh, Tyndall effect in the real situation ok so through that small holes we can see that uh, because they will be cooking in the same room and smoke will be there 
and the dust particles will be there they will not sweep, sweep that because the uh, floor also will be made up of uh, mud and uh, cow dung so dust particles will be there so when the light enters the beam of light will be very very nicely seen so that is because of the scattering of uh, sunlight due to the dust particles or what we call as the colloidal particles inside the house yeah that will be very nice to see even in tamil film they used to see so show that no suddenly the hero will open the door and the light will be there spotlight will be there so that you can see the uh, no tindal effect and uh, that can also be uh, seen like this here uh, you can see very clearly when i switch off the light you see how beautiful it is it is like a dense forest in a dense forest if you just uh, look at the sky okay after entering the forest the canopy of dense forest so you see that how beautiful it is here the tiny water droplets you know in the mist because the dense forest the water will not be evaporating very quickly so the tiny droplets will be there in the mist or during the winter season also so they will be just uh, scattering the light in different directions and thereby you can see very nicely why because the particles are playing the role as i said uh, the colloidal particles cannot be the molecules of the air even the water drops also can be considered as small water drops can also be considered as colloidal particles the size may be different okay drop means we have seen uh, the drops which is in the tumbler or uh, ink filler because they will not allow the light to enter very quickly you know it will take more time for them to enter it will get heated up then only the water will evaporate until such time the mist or uh, fog will be there around that so that the light will be uh, scattered out like this beautifully so this is what we say the uh, tindal effect of the sunlight okay right <coughs> and uh, there are some important points that we have to note about uh, tindal effect the color of the scattered light depends on size of the scattering particle if the size is more the scattering will also be more okay very fine particles scatter mainly blue light you have to remember if the particle size is very small they will scatter mainly blue light if particles of larger size will scatter light of longer wavelength okay that point you have to remember i we will discuss this in detail what is the reason if it is so what will happen let us see and similarly if the size of the scattering particle is large enough then the scatter light may even appear white also okay if the particle size is large enough they may become white light if it is very small this point you have to remember very fine tiny particles blue light okay very small particles blue light and if it is larger size the light will be of longer wavelength like red light okay the larger wavelength okay and if the size particle is too large somewhat larger then the light white light will be there light will be somewhat white in color because in multiple choice these points must be noted down sometimes they may be uh, asking related to this one okay and also what is a uh, scattering of light depends upon the size of the particles that is the point you have to remember size of the particle is the factor so based on these three factors let us see how it is getting scattered okay that uh, we will see in the next class right uh, related to that we are going to see how why is the sky looking blue sometimes and why is the sky red, looking red what is the reason and uh, some of the questions also we'll see in the next class okay right yeah